Hello and welcome to the Coon Hunting University Podcast. This is your host, Tyler Duncan. And like always, class is in session. Coon Hunting University is brought to you by Conkey's Outdoors, hunting and hound supply store. Find out more at conkeysoutdoors.com and Superior Hunting Lights. Superior, step up to the max. Use discount code CHU Podcast at checkout and receive 5% off on nighthunters.com. So, on part one, you heard a lot about Zeb and Candy. We kind of left off where Zeb died and how it happened. They found him in the dog box. On this episode, you're going to hear more about Koi and Moose, also known as Zach, who is two-time truck winner. I mean, just outstanding dog and who produced some outstanding puppies. And um, I think y'all will enjoy this one. You're going to hear a lot more than that. But if you're liking this story, just let me know on Facebook. I love to hear from y'all. So without further ado, here's the Wipeout Story, part two of three. Y'all sit back and enjoy. Well, Coy had a lot of bad luck. When Barry hunted him as a one-year-old, he should have won the truck that year when uh lace ended up winning it i think tim kramer but coy was treated with a coon even with the mouth he had but there was a river boat coming and uh, barry couldn't hear him to tree him and i treat him but <laughs> i treat him <laughs> <laughs> i treat him and kramer and stretch jumped up and down and and uh herschel i remember stretch herschel you just gonna let him walk up and lease him before we hear him or what <laughs> but uh he was treed and and maynard treed right behind me and uh, he was hunting um at moon moon yeah and but stretch kept he kept turning loose psycho and you know and kept making some bad trees and they, anyway they treed again at there at the end and all i got to do is get coy treed and and uh but i i treed him herschel took call he heard him so uh maynard treed right behind me and oh it was a we walked for a good while but the river boat was coming with us as we was going down the river the river boat was coming down the side of us with us finally they they got him stopped to get the time on us I went over and I, I shot the coon out. No, uh, that would have won the hunt. But, you know, Zeb had won the first truck, and this was the third truck. Zeb won the first truck I'd ever give away. I I think I've got five second places in truck hunt since Zeb won the first one. I've tied at the AKC truck hunt, you know, with Hellbilly, and I was in the final with Hellbilly again. I was in the final with Moose. Uh, Moose would have won the third truck. He's I hunted him in it when he was, I guess he's nearly 10 years old. And I had a truck ticket, and I hunted him in it. And first nine trees that Moose made in that hunt was plus. And then uh, the last two, he, he treated a coon in the final cast. The first, he treated eight in the first two casts, or he'd been on eight trees with eight coons in them. He made two den trees at the end. Uh, I know he had the coons. He just bad luck. I, I'm I'm bad luck second on him, on him truck hunts. Or Moose would have won three trucks. How'd you pick him out, Fergie Moose? What made you pick him? Well, when we bred Polly, me and Tommy McQueen, we bought her as a. I don't know. Polly was probably three year old. She was out of a dog called Super Sport, which was out of Silver Dollar Favorite, and went back to some of Wimp Aaron's dog. And she is Finley River bred on her bottom side. Polly was, she was special. She was a, smart as a whip. And she was three legged uh, when she was about, I'd say, a year old. Billy Joe Sanders owned her in Hornsby, Tennessee. And and uh, he would just turn her loose and she would run for days down in that bottom. And she finally went a miss one day. And it was two or three days before she come in, she she was in a beaver snare. And she had finally got the snare twisted up and it broke it, but it had cut in below her elbow and pulled all her muscle tissue and skin all down to her ankle. And uh, they ended up having to uh, take her leg off. They took shoulder blade and all off. 
I had heard her tree coons one night when she was nine months old. Me and Barry and Lawrence Pettigrew was down at Brownsville on a national wildlife refuge, and she was just a baby. And she treed coons all night long. And Lawrence tried to buy her that night, and Billy Joe wouldn't even think about selling her. But anyway, when she got her leg cut off and and uh, took off, and me and Tommy bought her four hundred fifty dollars, and I put her in three UKC hunts and won three first with her. Never lost a cast. Her three legged, and a front leg is you know I think worse than a back leg because. You know, especially in swamps and stuff, logs and everything. You know, she had trouble, but I mean, she she would most of the time come up first on the coon. She used her head, and uh, but anyway, we bred her to to Zeb. She had four pups. She may have had five. She may have had five pups. Billy and them got one up there. Some boy did. Phil, Phil Ramey, he bought yeah. he, and a little female, beautiful, and she ended up, he found what happened. Uh, she got loose, and he had a collar on her, and she was probably, I don't know, six months old, but I think she got hung in a fence, and he didn't know it. There was a little fence behind his house, and uh, he ended up, I think, finding her, uh, well, find her, found her dead, but he had been looking for her, didn't know what she had done, but she would got it hung in that fence, and I think that's what I think that's, if, I, if I'm remembering right, I think that's mm-hmm. what happened to her. She did have six because Ricky Campbell had one, and he got run over. And me and Tommy ended up picking out Moose, which his real name was Wipeout Zach. We called him Moose because he was so big as a pup and everything. And we kept Snug, which is Wipeout Kate, on her papers. And... uh Don Johnston had a female mate to him named Shania, was was a good female. The other male dog was n- never done nothing but pleasure hunted. He would tree coons, but, you know, that's just about as far as he went uh, because of the people that had him and everything. But And he wasn't the coon tree and dog that these dogs were, but Moose was, he was kind of a late starter. I know Coy was... He was done running in tree and coons and wild, and Moose would just kind of lollygag around and go off down the holler, and he tree a coon, and he wasn't all that tight on tree, and I thought, well, this dog ain't never going to be a uptight, all-night tree dog. And we kept hunting him, and he was so smart, he would just, I don't know, you wouldn't think he was doing nothing, he'd tree a coon. you turn him back loose, he'd tree another coon and the dog just the dog just clicked there at one time the first hunt we ever put him in barry had been trying to get brian owens and them or brian to buy him he said if you want a good dog you need to buy a moose at that time and i i can't really remember if we priced him for ten thousand or whether barry told him he could probably buy him for for ten thousand at that time but i we probably wouldn't have ever sold him, but the first hunt we put the dog in was in March that year. He was less than two and, <coughs> and uh, hadn't had his first super stakes. And we, Mark Plunk hunted him and I hunted Snug. And uh, we went to Sullivan, Alabama. And Mark come in. I said, You do any good? He said, Yeah. He said, I had got 775. And I said, Well, dang, you have done pretty good. So I got beat snug, and that was on Friday night. That Saturday night, we went back to Sullivan, and uh, I just carried moose back. Went with Barry. I don't know. I don't remember what Barry hunted, and I got in the final four. Terrell Pennington. He he wanted to hunt to hunt off. He wanted to hunt the night four, and I begged him out of it because me and Mark wanted to come back, or I did. So I carried most back, and we got in the final four, and we hunted off, and and I won the cast. But uh, just from our own, you know, it just things clicked, and we went on to win ninety eight thousand dollars with him, two trucks and the super stakes, and in pretty limited hunts. Yeah, I mean, you, well, I, this dog, this no dog hunt. didn't he, get hauled. He could have been two hundred thousand dollar one. He he <laughs> didn't go, he didn't go to. 35, 40 hunts. Uh, Moose, Fergie's so afraid something's going to happen to Moose. Uh, he he loved him, and I, <laughs> and I loved him too, but I, I loved to hunt him. 
and what he did let me hunt, I about won everything I ever, <laughs> I ever hunted him in. But he had the breeder showcase one with him one year up there. The first when he was a one year old, and they treat in a cover or something. And yeah, John walk up and them. I I started to cut the bush down that they circled and bring it back to the clubhouse. <laughs> it, it wasn't it, it was awful. With moose chase critters, or he was just strictly coon hunting. Moose was more of a moose was. He was so intelligent. He's a smart dog, but he was just coon tree was simple to him. And and the thing about moose, he could tree any kind of coon. You love a turn moose loose, and he'd be gone three minutes and treed, never bark on the ground. Or he, you love to turn him loose and not hear him for 15, 20 minutes and hear him strike in there and work an old track. And he was a lot like candy. If he struck, he was moving. And you could about bet on it, you know, in less than five, ten minutes, he was going to be treed on just about any track he struck. If he was running a coon, it was – it was just a matter of minutes, you know, till it was going to be treed. Barry said there was a bark he could give before he gave the locate that you 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 and, and them could treat him. And that came from Candy. You know, Moose had a, ah, oh, oh, oh. A lot of times he would put that chop in behind his balls and stuff, and he would triple locate. But on a running coon, it was, it was just like he knew that coon was up before he ever got to that tree. And he would run out of track, and he'd give a up bark. Just, oh, when you heard that, I'd tree him on it. And everybody, you know, he would hesitate there. It would be a few seconds before he'd come on it and, you know, come tree. And a lot of times he would just go from that and not even give you that up bark and just go, you know, he'd go from running to tree, and they'd think he was still running. I mean, you know, and he was treed every breath. But, the way Candy did, yeah. yeah. She, she, uh, he got that exact. It, I mean, it's just like his mouth anyway. Sound like like you listening to Candy Moose. It just it wasn't much. Especially tree, and he, and there was. I've never had the dog. Tommy did one night on a pro hunt. He uh, got out of hearing on Tommy, and and for ten years I never knowed that dog to out hunt his mouth. You could hear him over any dog. It was just distinct, you know, it carried so good. We just picked him out on account of his looks, and we got lucky picking the probably the best two pups of the litter. And uh, it just went from there, you know. The the breeding part kind of came later. Moose was, he uh, he had lots of bad luck, you know, throughout the years. Every time, it seemed like every time Moose would win a big hunt, something bad would happen to him. When he won the... Uh, super stakes in 98 it wasn't but a couple of weeks after that i got the feeling a limp node in his back leg and uh, well, i actually seen the picture didn't you on the well I, and i seen it after i found the limp node it was swelled up he ended up having blasto well i got to looking back at the super stakes pictures and uh i could see the limp node that was swelled in and he was swelled in at the super back stakes. of his leg <clears throat> so we had to treat him for blasto and uh then i don't know it was just a couple of months after that till the truck hunt was was coming up and that was in february 99 and tommy won it with him and uh then i carried him back in 2001 and won the other truck and then that well actually before that after we won the super stakes and had him had him treated for blasto, he come up with heartworms the next year, and we did we missed the world hunt that year on account of heartworms. So he he'd had a bad road there anyway. In two thousand one, when he won the second truck, uh, then that summer he come up with a a tumor on his leg, a hemangio parasitoma tumor, and the first thing they wanted to do was take his leg and hey, there wasn't no way that the dog's leg was coming off but they had never been able to cut one of the tumors out that was the only way to rid that dog of cancer was to take that leg and uh one of the oncologists she it was a female a woman and uh she knew a guy from colorado state that was doing implants they were still in the experimental stages and uh but never one of them had never been really successful 
because they couldn't get a graft to grow. They could leave it open <clears throat> and put the chemo implant in there. And uh, sometimes, you know, it was doing all right in there. So the only bad thing about it was I was breeding the dog, and they couldn't tell me whether the chemo was going to make the dog sterile or not, you know, because it was still in. And that's the only implant that Colorado State to this day, as I know of, has never released an, another implant. But anyway, they, they put it in there and they grafted it over his back. And uh, he had a black patch from there on. But anyway, they, they wanted to leave a blood supply going to it for the rest of his life from his back. And it was just a roll of skin. And I told him, I said, you know, there's no way I couldn't get it to get well in behind it. I told him, I said, that dog's not going to heal. And uh, then I had the choice, you know, before that to whether to take his leg and be able to breed him or, or uh, not take his leg and try this and it not work, and then I wouldn't even be able to breed him because he'd be sterile. But anyway, it all worked out. They, the implant took, and it's the first graft <coughs> that they ever got to live over one of those implants. It was dissolvable. <coughs> so... Conkey's Outdoors knows that keeping up with the latest in hunting technology can be expensive. That's why they are proud to offer amazing financing options from 30 days same as cash to 0% interest for 6, 9, 12, and even 18 months, depending on your credit score and the amount you spend. If you've been eyeballing that new thermal or want to upgrade to the latest in tracking system technology, go find out more on the web at conkeysoutdoors.com or if you're in the Hastings, Florida area, stop by and visit. They'd love to have you. Conkey's Outdoors. Houndsman. Helping houndsman. We mainly bred him then after the third truck or the second truck and, <coughs> and hunted him in a few hunts. And I was within a couple of thousand dollars passing Cracker. And everybody was on me, you know, why don't you haul that dog? And... It just didn't really mean – it meant a lot to me. I would have liked to have been the top dog, but I knew that some point in time, especially after now, you know, dogs are winning two and $300,000, and you can win 100000 in one hunt now. And it took me, you know, most one all that by five-year-old and very limited hunts. And it's just – it's just you know, it's hard when you've got a dog like that that you're wanting to keep and breed and stuff. And then Barry ended up hunting him when he was nine year old and truck hunt down there and he ended up winning second. Well, there I'd wasted probably three years that I should have probably been hunting the dog. <coughs> but anyway. Oh, he he could easily be, you know, money didn't, hunts wasn't, but Fergie wouldn't go. They don't pay. They didn't pay then like they do now, but he still went and won everything he went to. Now, he, you know, he ain't telling the story. Every time he would win a truck, he would carry his sister to win all the money. Fergie would win a handler ticket, and then and then Moose would uh, win the truck. Yeah, she done all the dirty work. <laughs> and that's another thing I can talk about. Uh, Snug, the reproducer that she was, uh you know, without her, there wouldn't be a uh, stylish Chloe. Uh, I bred her to Whitey. I actually bred her mother to Whitey, and she had seven pups. She had them on the 58th day, and we lost all the pups. And uh, Doug gave me a rebreed, and I carried Snug back up there and, and bred her, and that's where stylish Chloe and late-night trick come from. And, you know, Without Chloe Cochran and them dogs, you know, they for the last several years, you know, she is one of the main breeders at their kennel. That was that was Cochran's foundation. As when, it. when he got her, she started everything for him. Bred her to rat, outcome crazy, and all of them. It was every you know, several of them done good. Mm -hmm. And then what them dogs reproduced and it's carried on down. And then it late night trick. You know, she was a mate to Chloe out of Whitey. Well, I bred Trick to Zeb again the first time I was ever bred, and that's a triple threat. That's where threat come from. Oh, uh, so all that goes back to that. And then, then he bred Snug to Oz, right? Yeah, I draw, 
it got down to the top eight in the world hunt. Kevin Turner done bought eyes from Doug. And, and Avery and Buzz, they all partnered in. Uh-huh. And uh, it got down to it was a heads-up cast, me and eyes. And Snug, I'd carried Moose up there and got him in on Monday night. I drove all the way back home and uh, carried Snug back and got her in. And uh, Friday night, I won two rounds. Tommy won his early round with Moose and got beat late. And he was mad because I wasn't hunting Moose, but I couldn't hunt them both. And uh, I was that night, it was, boy, it was a frosty night, cold, and, you know, unusual for up there at the world hunt. But that was no excuse. Snug, I don't know what was wrong with her. I never had her to do it, but she went out there and she quit and she come back and she's following us around. That's the first time I'd ever had the 15 put on her. Oz just sinks in that country, comes treed like a freight train horn in there with the mouth he had. Go in there, it's a small maple tree. We're in a small wooded flat bottom. Big coon sitting right at the top. We cut him back loose. Snug comes into the tree with us and trees. We cut them back loose, same thing, a little bit. It's it's a good little bit for while he strikes, carries him a little track in there. Well, here comes Snug back again. And uh, why, I have no idea. And we go in there, Oz, he gives that freight train locate, comes treat again, we go in there, coon. And I just withdraw. Well, that's when I bred to Oz. And... Out of that cross come Dusty, a little female. She was blonde-headed, odd-colored female. Beautiful little dog, good mouth. Well, we bre- I bred her to Zeb again. and uh, That's Zeb 3. That's where Zeb 3 came from. And Zeb 3 was the last one in that litter to leave my house. And uh, I was done and had kind of planning on keeping him. And me and Barry was hunting that night and uh boy called him wanted to know if he still had a pup for sale and bear said yeah we've got one and he said well can you meet me tonight and barry said well i I guess we can if you he said you know it was done late he said well i'll be up there by i don't know midnight or one o'clock or something like that and and so we went back to my house and got that pup we met him on 57 highway down my road and uh that's where Zeb three. You had a lightning bolt on his back, like like Zeb, like old Zeb did. And that boy, that boy that said Jeff Crap was his name from Mississippi, and he he had said, "Now I want a blanket back dog. I want a blanket back pup. I'll meet you tonight." Well, we were hunting, so uh, you just call me when you get up here. And so he he called, and we met him over there and <clears throat> got him out. That was Zeb three. He was a little old baby pup, but he said, "I don't like him." Oh, you say I don't like a lightning bolt. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, you said he's blanket back. I said he is blanket back. I said, but he's got a it's a black back, but he's got a little lightning bolt in it, like Zeb had. Well, I'm gonna take him. But I don't like him. And then the rest is history. I could tell the story on him too. Cause I, I owned Zeb three probably three times. I tried to buy him twice more. Had him bought, drove to the hunt, and everything else to get him, and and he would back out when I'd get there. I think Zeb 3 may be the all-time reproducing male dog now. Zeb 3 definitely is what's probably carried the wipeout dogs on at this point, you know. And, and talking about that blonde color, the dog at Dustin Weed's hunting right now and Marv and all them, that's the first litter that I ever seen Zeb 3 throw that they were blonde-headed like Dusty. Like Zeb, his mother. Like Zeb 3. I made, a, I made a comment up there at Somerville one night. Dust, Dustin got in, I got in, and uh, Bobby McBride got in. And of course, Dustin wanted to hunt it off, and, and I, I didn't want to hunt it off. I was going to split because we had another night of hunting next night. This was on Friday night. And I said, <clears throat> I, I didn't say it meaning being mean, but I said, I, you know, that little dog reminds me of Zeb 3's mom, old Dusty. I said, and I might have called him ugly or whatever, but 
Dustin, every time he gets in, he always says, my little ugly dog got in. He, <laughs> he always refers to me being, <laughs> making that comment, but, uh, um, but he's done great things with that little dog. But, um, you know, there's, you know, we get talking about all these dogs and you can keep talking about each and every one of them has done some great things and reproduced great things. But going all the way back, back to old Zeb, it seemed like you had this, everything was right there. And even him producing the Koi Moose and Koi Moose was whole much, so much like him. Koi probably had that more streamlined look like Zeb than Moose. Moose was more thick made big made koa had more of that old zeb look a little bit um and and zeb again had that look zeb three had that same look moose through dogs it was a little thicker i had peaches that come out of moose that was just she was a carbon copy of her daddy and um you know this yeah there's more stocky a little more stocky build i you know they would eat they would eat every bite you give. Them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they you, you didn't have to worry even, about putting food down in front of them. They was going to. I eat carried it. Moose's sister to a hunt, Shania, and um, I tell you how much they liked to eat. Uh, she was friendly as she could be, but they wanted to take a picture over there beside a sack of Joy dog food, <laughs> and she jumped on every dog there. I, <laughs> I, I, <clears throat> and I didn't realize what it was till uh, it was all about the dog food right there. Uh, she would. But, I know we were sort of talking about Moose and Coy. Um, Coy got the recognition of being the fastest dog probably alive, but Moose was as fast as Coy. Moose just didn't bark like Coy. We didn't have garments to tell you how fast they were, but he he was as fast on a track as, as Coy was. But Coy sounded like he was absolutely about to catch something, and he normally was. He he. We were on a hunt one night with Billy, and – um, he put in with a pack of fox dogs that come through, and whoa, 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 whoa. they was just, <laughs> <laughs> and he put in with them and run for about an hour and fell off and treated a coon. And <clears throat> I, I think Dickie Deaton might have been on that cast, but Coy was an amazing young dog too. At, at ten months old, he he was just amazing. And like you said, Brian Owens bought him. He put our names on it. Kitty Owens and Young, K O Y. That's how he got his name. He, uh, I, I took him out and won a truck ticket with him. Just bam, you know. And the next thing I know, he's sick. He's got blasto. He's just barely a year old. Oh, uh, got blasto. These dogs that use that nose, keep it on the ground, keeping it everywhere. I don't know. They just seem to get blasto. Coma had blasto. Candy had blasto. Moose had blasto. Coy had blasto. And Moose's first litter of pups, the one we kept, had blasto. And I don't know if I've had one with blasto since. But <laughs> back, back then, you couldn't keep it off of No, it, it was everywhere around here at that time. The Coy was dead. He he was dead. He was a year old. And His he, color had turned green. He, he was dead. Brian Owens, we carried him over and he got tested. And they run a needle in there and got his tested. And he had blasto. And we got some medicine. And Coy said, just kill I mean, Brian Owens said, just kill him. I said, I can't kill him. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to raise him. And I got him home. Mark Sullivan gave me some elk meat, deer meat, and I'd blend it up, eggs. I cooked sugar. I poured it down him. And, and Didn't, didn't I, he have a, a collapsed lung? Barry? I'm sorry yeah. to bother you. Mentioned, but yeah, he had a collapsed lung. At, 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 this wasn't the time. It was another oh, time. okay. But, yeah, he his head wasn't two, in, two inches wide. I mean, he wasn't. There was no, no, nothing on him, no meat on him. And, but Brian said, kill him. And I said, Brian, what do you take for the dog? And he said, well, you'd be crazy by him. I said, well, I probably would. And and I knew he'd give $3,000 for him. I said, I'll give $3,000 for him and where he lives or dies. I don't think I had the money. I think I had to pay him a little bit later. <laughs> but I said, I'll give $3,000 for him and, and you just, uh, I'll, I'll keep him and the truck ticket's mine. He said, you crazy, but you, you bought him. And I healed that sucker. I mean, I, I worked on him. And about two or three weeks before the Super Stakes, one-year-old, 
I said, told Fergie, I said, I'm going to carry him one night. And we carried him and that, Moose. That was the night I was talking about when he was so wild. We went to Jacob Place. Yeah, he he run a dang deer for two hours. Oh. Uh, finally, got fell off a tree. He was just, his mouth, you couldn't even hear it. He was just squeaking, squealing. Yeah. I gave him another two or three weeks and, and you know, hunting him and doing that. And first night, Super Stakes, I'm, I'm in the finals. Super Stakes, and uh, got him right in and. I ended up getting beat, but uh, and I sold him to. Uh, well, Brian came back over here and had he had bought all some Manny. He'd give a bunch of money for this podcast. I may not tell his wife might be listening how much he <laughs> gave for all some Manny, but she had won the world hunt, and uh, he brought him over here, and we went over on an island, and I'd had Coy right out of the super stakes, all that, and. And uh, I remember Coy treed three singles, and we found her eating on the dead fish on the side of the bank. And uh, <laughs> he gave me a bunch more again. I ain't going to say. Uh, he gave me a bunch more, and he bought him back. And he carried him up there and moved up. He moved up to Ronnie Bones and them and, and went to hunting. And he was just a, he was a powerhouse young dog. And Brian went to quit. Me and Clay bought him back. We we done good with him again and uh and then sold him Lloyd C. Morris and he kept him uh he kept him rest of his life. Did y'all not breed him very much? I mean, cause he you we know he's really known to be the re- the one that in my right. mind, you know, from the outside looking in. Coy was bred and he had some, he had some good pup. Ru- Ruby's out of Coy. She's a two time pro to his. She won fifty something thousand dollars too. Uh you know, I don't know if uh, Coy reproduced his likeness as much as uh, as much as Moose did, uh, but now he had some he had some good young dogs. But he was not bred as much as Moose uh, because Coy was unlucky. I mean, he 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 lost that first truck hunt because of a riverboat. He he lost countless hunts because of a little something. He would be in the finals. <laughs> you you could mark it down. He's going to get there. But Moose would win the big hunt, and he would get second. It was like every time something would happen to Coy. And but then, uh, so Ruby, Ruby was out of Coy, and I she was a wild sucker. She was one of them you had to run her down, hunt her to death to to get her where she would be right. Or if not, she was going to run too much junk. She had too much power, just like Coy, uh, you know. And then we ended up breeding. Ruby to Moose, which everybody said, oh, that's that's crazy. But Zeb again was out of Ruby and Moose. Zeb again was the first platinum champion ever out of two platinum champions. And was was he the first line bred wipeout dog? Well, I don't feel he's the first, but well, the first one that y'all made, the first tight cross. That the you really made. probably the tightest cross we made because that's the first time we probably put Coy and. And Moose back together. Well, and Coy on the bottom was out of a Schooner River dog. Yeah. A half brother sister cross to him. Anyway. She yeah. was out of Schooner River Lipper, fat lady was. And then Queen Five, I think, or either Queen Six. Queen Five. Queen Five. The, the sorriest, yeah. the sorriest one. <laughs> That's what Wimp, Wimp said. You listen, Wimp said it. <laughs> the good one got, he run it over. <laughs> yeah. But yes, yeah, so he was already tight bred on the bottom. Yeah, and then we then we we doubled it up, put wipe out on both sides. Uh, I remember I'm tucking my picture up there because he was the first platinum champion that ever been out of two out of his mother and daddy both being platinum. They may be all platinums now. I don't know, but like all grand knights, but he was the first. Zeb three, he was lion bred. You yeah, know, one dog there. Yeah, was well, Zeb. Zeb again then, so he was bred to Dusty, which Dusty was out of Snug, Moose's sister. That was Zeb three, so it it just that just done it even worse, even more. But Zeb again was uh he had a brother that was amazing too. Uh but Zeb again's the most accurate dog I ever hunted, uh, out of all of them. They all had coons, don't get me wrong. Zeb again, I could hunt him three hundred nights a year. And you turn loose three or four times a night. Uh, you could count on one hand at the trees that didn't have it that you thought didn't have a coon in it. 
I've had him tree on an iron bridge rail, and he had a coon in it. How many, how many boar coons do you think Zeb again treed? There's no telling. Ninety percent of them. <laughs> he hated a kitten coon that they it, it took too much time. I hunted Zeb again at the breeder showcase one year when Barry first got him back, and that dog hadn't had his feet on the ground in two years, and I had four seventy five that night. And got in the top four at the Breeders Showcase when, with him. When Barry got him back, uh, he sold him to Bob Frigid. Yeah. And then and then and say up three two. Mm. Had both of them. Uh Barry got them two dogs back. Fergie hunted him that year in a world hunt and liked to win the world hunt. Yep. With him. I mean he and he had been out of it for a little while. The top six. Was we in top six with Yeah. Him? You, you, you draw Cross I draw Croson with Hemi. And yeah, she had 300 minus in the first little bit, and everybody's congratulating me. I said, Zeb ain't made a tree yet, boy. They got across the dad gum <laughs> deep creek, and Hemi got treed. Probably if we'd have got to Hemi, she she probably had a coon tree, but she'd gnaw it, and the two would get her, and we'd be looking for a place to cross, and Zeb was through the country running, and I heard Zeb put that coon in the ground. And I was done looking for me a place to cross because I just knew Zeb was going to come treat in there at any time. And Croson would retree Hemi. And we'd start looking for a place, another place to cross. Well, she'd hush. And I mean, she didn't just hush for 30 seconds, 40 seconds. When the two would catch her, you know, it would be a long time before she would bark again. And he would tree her back on that tree. And that went on for an hour and a half probably. And uh, it was just ridiculous, you know, the kind of hunt we was having with those two dogs. But anyway, she finally leaves. Well, Zeb again, he comes back in there. And he goes to opening. Well, they get together, and they going down a creek, probably seven, 800 yards, and they it ain't no good track. They get the track up running, and uh, all I've got a tree far is a quarter. You know, all I've got to be is on her tree or tree a coon or not do nothing. And I've got it won. And he'd have been in the final four or final three. And Hemi beats him on that coon. And he just how hiding around there, boy, he ain't wanting to back her at all. And, uh, and I knew it. And we sat there and sat there along as five, well, the shortest five, actually, you know, because all I was needing was a quarter. And we would done walk, we had done got close to them down there. It wasn't nothing I could do. There was no <laughs> way for me to pitch. To, yeah, pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was going to do, boy. Croson was looking me right in the eye. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we get in there. The time goes up, the hunt's over. and Well, you and, treat. You treat it, and you treat. And I treat. And Cliff Day then says, it's 501, Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, all I was wanting was that quarter, boy. And uh, we got in there, and the dog, he come out from under that old big slough, and they was treated right on a big slough. And they, they treated up a big pin oak, and the boar, big old coon, I figured the boar coon laying up on the first limb. And, you know, it was just, wouldn't meant for him to win that night. It was if you got a snap on Zeb again, it didn't matter how it was. You had plus points. That's just all I can say. But <laughs> you, uh, what did. what hunt? What hunt? I think you was at Barry. I think Ronnie Smith brought it up. You treated Zeb in there, and some somebody. I think Ronnie was in the cast as a final, and he asked Fergie. He said, "You think he's gonna have a coon?" And Fergie said. You can bank on him having a game. <laughs> it, mattered, it didn't matter temperature. It didn't matter nothing. Zeb again treed. If you got snap on him, you had plus points. He just he was a, he was amazing at that. He was a good track dog. He he'd run junk. I my old buddy's gonna break him off a deer, shot him in the butt with a shotgun in the daytime. We'd we'd hunt him in daytime too and just trying to get him off a of junk. Uh, but yeah, he he would run hour. He'd run hogs. He's bayed hogs. He's bayed and caught deer, eight point deer, and us get out there. To, uh, I know Brian Owens. One time we was at the World Hunt. And they had this uh, the little tag goes on the front of your truck says "Bayed Solid." He said, "You need to get that for Zeb again. <laughs> Put that on your truck." <laughs> and, and, and Zeb again. I'm sorry, Tyler. Zeb again threw 
more tree minded dogs than he was. Yeah. Um, you know, he he reproduced tree minded dogs. It was crazy. You would never thought that dog, in my opinion, would have thawed the tree minded dogs like, as he did. Like, you know, Fergie had um a, a little female called Dana. Dana was off of Awesome Annie, the one that Barry was talking about that Brian had, the one the world hunt. He bred bred uh the Sackett Jr. Yeah, him and Stretch carried her up there and bred Sackett Jr. And out come Dana, and then uh, she was a pretty nice little female, but Fergie bred her to Zeb again, and that's where Hellbilly come from. Hey, y'all. So, Coon Hunting University is brought to you by Superior Light Company, best lights in the business. If you don't believe me, go check them out, nighthunters.com. Use coupon code CHU podcast at checkout and receive almost twenty dollars off Hellcat Max. But that code is good for any superior light on that website and the battery tester, which works with the Hellcat Max. So go over there and check them out. Yeah, hell Billy, you know, we get to that. But one thing I was going to say about Zeb again is I sold him to Ronnie Nickens. He's 13, 14 months old, and, and uh, he. Uh, I was a reason for that. They go said. <laughs> Ronnie got out up there and he got his chair out of the back of, he had a chair in the back of his truck. And they said, what, what are you doing with the chair? And he said, that's a wipeout chair. <laughs> you sat in that thing and listened to him run all night. Me, me and, uh, me and Jerry McAfee, uh, Barry had, had bred across, uh, what it was, see, it was, it was Tank and, is it, it, it was Tank, Zeb again, and, and Zoe. Yeah, and I and Barry wanted me to hunt Zoe in the Super Stakes. So me and Jerry McAfee come up one night and pleasure hunting with Barry. And he, no, let me back up. This, this, this was way before then even. They were still young. You had all three of them. It was like eight months old. Yeah. And uh, we went pleasure hunting, and Barry could take one of them and park on the side of the road pleasure hunting, turn one of them one way, get out turn another one another way they would strike both tracks on each side of the road go tree coons just act like old dogs at, at, at a baby at and his babies and um <clears throat> that, he said i ain't never seen nothing like he this. said i ain't never seen nothing like this he, <laughs> and, and and barry was really high on tank at the time he was a big thick dog like moose yeah and he yeah. operated like him at a baby i mean you know he he was exactly like moose on tree and coon and uh Zay, I mean, Zeb again was just like Coy and all them had, had been just wild and built like them and just like I say, moved around. And I, I, I seen something special there in him that night. Uh, Tank probably outdone him that night when he was little, but, um, I'll never forget. I, I, I might have been the Nationals. I, it seemed like it was at, at Salem, not Salem, Floral, Illinois. I, I, I just pulled up and, Ronnie would, had pulled beside me, Nickens, and uh, he come up to me. He said, uh, have, you, have you hunted with anything young and that you like? And I said, Ronnie, I, I've hunted with a dog the other night. Barry's got it that, that you would love. And he said, call him right now and tell him I'll give him 5000 And he said, I ain't going to try him. I, I'm, I'm going to buy him. And, and that's exactly what I, I, I called him on the phone. And I said, I said, Barry, Ronnie's right here beside me. He told me he'd give you five thousand for that for that young dog, and Barry said, "Well, he he bought him." <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen months old. I had three of them. You know what do you do? Then Ronnie won a truck ticket with him, and then I bought him back uh, from Ronnie, and then I I never I kept him then and done all that other with him too. But I I messed around and got mad at him one night. I I told him the story earlier. And uh, shouldn't have ever did it. He was in his prime, but I was building a house. Son's playing travel ball, and I just I, I sold him, and, and I couldn't wait to one day get him back. And I actually, I, Adam Joyner come up here and hunted Zeb three, and I so Bob Pridgen, I'd sold him Zeb again, and so he wanted to he wanted to buy Zeb three, and so he bought him right there too. So me and Summers at the World Hunt and. And Sumner Cullum, he's a good friend of mine. He he was partners with me on Hellbilly, and or I, I was partners with him. He actually bought him, and I I was partners with him. But um, I was on I was on Pridgen, and he got mad up there to World Hunt and said he'd sell both dogs. And there's a bunch of money, which I said, well I'll take them. I said pay him Sumner because I didn't have no money. <laughs> I, I, I just bought them, <laughs> and uh, so I had Zeb three and Zeb again. 
and hillbilly here. I had, I may have had Clayton too at one time. I had Ruby. I've had five platinum champions in that pen at one time. And world champion. And it was Speck. And- yeah, I had Speck uh, here too on part of him. Todd Brady. Uh, so I was breeding four or five. Of them. I, I was breeding every day at that time. Uh, sometimes twice a day on on them dogs, but and then I had had Ruby too. But Hellbilly was one of my favorites also. Cause what he would do is every, I owned Zeb again too. I mean Zeb three twice, but Hellbilly would make me sell him during the week. Yeah, one time we went and got <laughs> Zeb three before we ever got home with him. You done him so <laughs> well. He Hellbilly was just a machine out here, boy. Pleasure hunting and then. Zeb three do some running, you know, but and then I would draw Zeb three right after I'd sell him, and he'd beat me to death. And I think, why did I sell that stuff? <laughs> when when you dropped Billy from the tailgate, they wasn't a dog that I can think of in my mind that could get in there this quick to treat that first coon out of the truck. Is that dog? If a, if somebody told me you better get you a dog at tree a coon. Crime fiction shoot you. That'd be the dog. I believe I'd I'd come back and get. <laughs> I'd all leave with Yeah, you I know. mean he he had that coon, and he owned it. I mean he would embarrass dogs. If you could have moved coon. him every time, he would he, be. He'd, he, have ne- he'd have never lost. Well, he would beat you. Thousand, he, huh? Yeah, but he know, was slow on recuts. He he hated. He thought I'd done such a wonderful job, Dad. Why do you got to send me off of this coon without killing it? Mm-hmm. He loved the coon. He loved the tree. But but I got him where he I got him where he'd recast. But he he wasn't you know as good as he was out of the truck. There's there's no comparison. No was, doubt about that. If and he every once in a while, and it's come probably from Dana when I bred when I bred Dana. Brian Owens gave me her when she just a puppy. Like I said, she was out of awesome Annie and Sackett Jr. And they went to Frank Giddings that night, and Giddings was gonna carry them hunting with Sackett Jr. And they got up there and there's about six inches of snow on. And uh, he said they, you know, they told him, said, "Ain't no need you turning him loose. So we're gonna breed regardless." And and uh, Frank said, no, I'll turn him loose, let you hear him. And he cut him loose, and I think he went through two sections and got treed in there, stretched, and I don't know if he had a coon or not. <laughs> More than likely he did. He said, but there was tracks going to the den, and there was tracks coming from the den. <laughs> and he said, I don't know if the coon had left the den and come back, or whether he'd come back to the den and done left. <laughs> but, but anyway, Dana, Dana was a good dog. She cut two of her fl- flexor tendons when she was real young. She was treed in Tuscumbe River Bottom, and there's a bunch of light bulbs and glass bottles and stuff had floated up there in a drift up the side of a big cypress. And she cut both her flexor tendons on her foot, and, and she couldn't hold up a hunting her hard and uh so i bred her to zeb again and and hell billy you know what he that's what think where a lot of that clean tree in and and stuff come from on him but sometimes he would miss and, and that cost him a truck and uh one year when barry got him in down there it was one of the best cast i ever been on that was a heck of a final four. it was a zeb three mojo hoochie mama and hell billy <laughs> and uh it was just it was anybody's ball game really right out of the truck and i don't know that was the first time a panel had ever went out on a cast and i don't know it was just uh, i think ryan handled that night like he didn't have nothing to lose because i feel like Crossing know- was all offense <laughs> travis could have had an automatic hunter and i asked him i said man what are you waiting on why you why are you not striking he said there's too many lawmen out here <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is the first the first time they ever sent a panel to the woods and jeff was scared i didn't strike i mean it was just a roar when we instantly when we cut loose I should have struck better. I'd I'd have probably won the hunt, but Croson strikes. But we end up making a tree out there. Uh, me and Croson, that's it. Ain't, it ain't got a coon in it. And uh, 
I looked down at the bottom of that tree. The panel was standing there. Al Nunneman and some of them, and uh, I see a little old bitty hole there at the bottom of it. So I got down there, and I, the Jackie Cumberland was judging, and he was out looking up the tree, and I, so you know, panel ain't said nothing. So I just I get to dig in there. I dug me a good little hole right there in the bottom of that tree. So Jackie walks back in there. I said, "Here's a hole in the bottom of this tree." So he gets down there and he reaches up in there and he said, "Boys, that's a hole. Circle him." Al Nunneman, Fergie's a camera, uh, the something like the radio radio man. He said, "Do you believe Kitty just dug a hole in front of the panel?" Four four judges <laughs> yeah. made a front tree out of a circle <laughs> tree out of a slick tree. Said, Do you believe he done it right here in front of all of us watching? Him Everybody at, looking at him. And he got nobody right, said a word. <laughs> That, that was photo, wasn't it? That was photo. <laughs> hey, that was photo. Oh, man. So, are you really still driving one of them old trucks that you won? I still got the last truck. We sold the first truck in 1999 at the hunt to Larry Meeks. James McCormick drove it. I guess he wore it out. He bought it for a judging truck. And uh, then I, I won this white truck, and I had a handler ticket, and – and uh, I got the truck, and I've still got it in the garage. It's got forty four thousand miles on it. Guess what? Yeah. Guess what it says on the front? Moose. Moose. <laughs> I imagine. Yeah. So, and you, for the people that are listening, what would it take to get some a straw of that moose semen off of? <laughs> I probably wouldn't oh, sell it. Oh, it's any. a good time. <laughs> <laughs> watch him. Watch him. Sure. He'll go quiet now. <laughs> oh, you, now, you, you quiet now. And you have some wipe out Clayton, too, for the people that's listening. Huh? Yeah, I've got some. Put your phone number out there now. Or <laughs> you can play, you can look it up. I got about 17 straws on Clayton. And uh, when Barry had him, a I got a jug of moose. <laughs> you got, so you got plenty to spare for the people that somebody wants. Well, I, you know, I ain't really got. A, I don't think I've got that much on on most. It's been so long. I don't really know how much I've got in one place. Limited edition. And uh, <laughs> I've got it stored in two different places because they can't hold it all. And I and I went. You know, I <laughs> I started out going to breed some females. I bred Jesse Jane. You know, I I sold some semen and we bred her, but she didn't have pups. And bred crazy, and I bred the crazy female that uh, Cochran and them's got, and and you know I hated it because Jane didn't have pups, and they and found out crazy had cancer, and that might have been what killed that, that deal it, there. But it she, was just a, it was just a bad deal. Jane, she was Mark was hunting her to death, in her thyroids and stuff wasn't just right, and I I figure that's the reason she didn't have pups, and you know it could have been anything using frozen semen, who knows. But uh, uh, crazy when we bred her, she didn't have pups, and like Billy said, you know, it wasn't just, just a few months. Like just, that's what just they a found. A little bit. She had a big softball-sized tumor, and uh, in there, and that's the reason. But the first female that I bred, uh, she had pups, and then I bred another pup. And Billy, I I had never told nobody. I was wanting to surprise people with these pups, and they've not come along that well. But I bred uh, Jimmy Wilson's female that's out of threesome, and uh, Noisy Little S, which was out of Wild Irish Rose and Harry Balls. And I've got two female pups out of that cross. And Jimmy ended up, I done forgot the – the pup had he got sick with something and jimmy had to have him put down but anyway i there's they're there and uh it's gonna be a some more breeding stock probably with my health issues and stuff now you know i don't get to hunt as much if i would have been like i was 20 years ago i would done have them doing something but uh anyway you know both times i bred you know i've got pups and i sold all my i had zeb again semen hellbilly semen i sold it i wasn't living in the past you can see that er everything me and fergie bred from polly we got zeb i mean from moose uh <clears throat> you know i bred out to mark sullivan's female which was out of wimp stuff and then we got coy and then we bred moose and ruby we got zeb again then I bred, you know, late night trick got threat. We, uh, 
about every good dog, you know, hellbilly, Fergie had the female Dana. About every good dog I ever had, you know, it, we just breed, and and we would get a dog that win forty, fifty thousand dollars. So I didn't. I thought I'm not living in the past, but now I wish I had some of it because once me and Fergie quit, I I quit hunting there for a while, quit breeding, and it just seemed like it. Uh, it was gone. Now, I, I do love to see that everybody keeps a wipeout name on them because uh, I look, I still look and watch. You know, I can pull for Scott Engel now. He's got a wipeout dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one, this one, a truck. Are they, are they like wipeout in name only? I, I don't think so. I mean, they go back. Uh, you know, if they, yeah. you know, these, it's, I mean, it's like the shifter dog that, that Billy's hunting right now. That's six generation of over. Every one of them being a nearly a hundred thousand dollar winter dog. I mean, it was Coma, Zeb, uh, Zeb again. Uh, let's see, Zeb three. Yeah, if you look at Shifter's top side, is um, unbelievable. Threesome had an unbelievable top. Right, side. and then Threesome, you know, he's a world champion. All of them was so many platinum champions, and we've talked about me and Fergie call each other and talk to each other weekly, and. You know, when you when you want good dogs for all the listeners out there, I've I've just seen it in the past. If you can keep that blood so strong where you ain't you can eliminate the weak links in that bloodline, you're gonna get something strong, especially if they go to the right hands that know what to do with them. And that's the key, I guess, if uh, the right men get them. But if you breed good dogs to good dogs and and stay strong with that the proof's in the pudding we, we, we've accomplished that and we've seen it you know it's just like peaches and willie that litter right there you know that whole litter was a great great yeah, Fer- out of Fer- show show them i know i know the listeners can't see it but fergie's got a scar on his lip <laughs> yeah and and, and i and i, I want to get this story out here uh <laughs> real quick i know I, i'll try to be quick with it <clears throat> I mean, hey, we got uh, time, buddy. We staying. <laughs> Kitty's kitties won't go. Kitty can go coon hunting tomorrow night. Well, that's all I do is coon hunt. Um, <laughs> yeah. Call the boss. See if you can take off tomorrow. You know me. When I this me looking back at at the history of these dogs and what we what we've seen me and Barry, Clay and Fergie and all these guys that live around here, uh, we've been super blessed. God has. It's, it seems like lots of these crosses happen for a reason. God has, in my my opinion, blessed us so good, and and I mean we owe thanks to Him every day for what He what I've seen Him do in my Amen in my in, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> when I'm, I'm getting to this story, when when me and my brother Avery, we had a female called War River Ugg. She was off of uh, Wild Clyde. And uh, and Bonnie Harold Edwards had a little little female called Bonnie. He had made they had made that cross a, a few times. Me and Avery ended up buying Clyde uh, there, and but before Clyde, we, before we bought him, we had Ugg. And uh, I think we finished her pretty high in the Super Stakes one year. But uh, Avery wanted to breed to, to moose, moose breeder to moose, and I and I told him I said I think it's going to be a phenomenal cross. So we everything was right we we, we we've been doing this a little while you know we we took her to the vet that day i remember got the brucellosis test we even had them to check her they said she looked right and they said yeah she's it's perfect so we drove down here bred and pulled up to fergie's house and and moose was an aggressive breeder i mean he attacked one if you just hold if you held it he was coming to him you gonna collect money? Yeah, and 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 uh, <laughs> and, and and this female here now, Fergie can tell you this: she was a big, strong, stout of females you ever seen. Me, my brother, Fergie, his brother, and I, I can't remember who else. We we had a leg a piece trying to hold her, and we should have knew things just wasn't something wasn't right. Maybe we was too early, but Vet has told us we was like on the twelfth or thirteenth day. Everything should have been right. And Avery wasn't wanting her to go out of heat where you're hunting the super state. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anyhow, so they did hang for maybe this not long. It wasn't, it wasn't even a minute. You no, know, they pulled out. He pulled out. 
Fer, <laughs> Fer, I was telling Fergie's got the scar. She, we while we was holding her, she jumped up and done a side flip and cook, and caught him in the, with her toenail right in the lip uh-huh. and brought Bottom blood. Lip. Brought blood. <laughs> Fergie jumped up and hollered. <laughs> but but anyway, you know, and and me looking back at this, it's like it was like God was saying, "Boys, this ain't this ain't the cross. This ain't the cross." Well, <clears throat> since that didn't happen, months expired and and Avery sold Ugg and um, this guy named James Montgomery lives um, out Bass Springs area. He this a pleasure hunter. He had bought this little female in Louisiana called Annie, and Annie was off of uh, bones that went back to coma, and I think Silver Dollar Crockett on the bottom side is what she was she was bred good and and james got mad at her for running a coyote or something one night and he called my brother and said avery you want to buy any and and avery had hunted with her or just knew a little something about her he said yeah and anyway they made that happen um peanut got involved in the deal peanut bought in with avery and they went to winning with annie and Avery had had the stud feed that he'd already give uh, Ferg and Tommy for because Ugg didn't stick. Annie come in heat, and at that time Henry was and Jeff was winning everywhere. So in Peanut's mind, he thought maybe we need to breed a Henry. And Avery said, "Listen, you don't understand how tight Fergie is. I'll never get my much stud feed money back." <laughs> <laughs> so so peanut um, you know and he liked moose too and but you know that i think that had a lot to do with it but we you know when bread annie and and out come peaches i really hope y'all enjoyed that interview as much as i did if you like what you heard here go on over to facebook Give us a like at Coon Hunting You. Also, go to Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating and a review. It really helps us out. And remember, if you need a new hunting light, do not overlook Superior. They make an awesome light, best customer service in the business. Man, their walking light and double red is the brightest I've ever seen. Use coupon code CHU Podcast at checkout at nighthunters.com. You can find the link in the description box below this. Coon Hunting University is a product of Audio Hound Productions. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful day.